Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we will be working on yet another item that has been gifted to me by the gods of Facebook Marketplace. Today's unnecessary purchase has four tires, a steering wheel, a seat, and two cylinders. However, unlike the last small engine thing we bought off Facebook Marketplace and made a video of, this one was not cobbled together in someone's barn, but rather a factory made item. This is the BKS Groundhog Duel. So like I said, we found this on Facebook Marketplace. It popped up for 200 bucks, and I went, oh shit, that's cool. Got in the truck and went and bought it. What I did not realize was exactly how rare this thing is. There's like three or four pictures of these on the internet, and like two videos of them idling. As far as I could see, there were no videos of anyone ever riding one of these. This thing has been sitting for a number of years. The uh, story was that this guy's friend's family used to drive it all over the place, but of course the kids grew up and it got parked in the machine shed and hasn't been driven in a number of years. Like I mentioned, this is a factory setup. This is two Honda GX200 motors. Actual Hondas, not clones. These motors are six and a half horsepower each and both feature a chain clutch setup. There has been a good deal of debauchery and welding and cutting done to this thing, but I'm sure it's probably been broken more times than we can count. In fact, it looks like at some point the entire front might have been snapped off. Overall though, this cart is not in terrible shape. Uh, this sticker right here was literally worth the 200 bucks I paid for it alone. And you can see right above that we have our dual <laughs> run and stop switches, which how damn cool is that? Uh, both motors do spin over. Nothing stuck. And they're both Hondas, so... I'm sure after a quick tank flush and carb rebuild, they'll run. And we're really excited to see what that'll be like. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get some tools over here, get the tripod set up, and start seeing if we can bring this thing back to life. Start ripping around the yard once again for the first time in years. So as you can tell, no, this is obviously not a car and not our usual content. But uh, I, there is a reason I wanted to make some go-kart videos. For starters, we've been hanging out with the go-kart guys a lot in the last couple years because that's fun. I mean, it doesn't matter how old you get, go-karts are never not fun. But we, uh, we don't have anything to race. I always just go and I don't ever get to bring anything. Another reason is that go-karts are small, very easy to work on, and very inexpensive in comparison to cars. I could build both of these engines as high as they could go, put all new tires, rims on it, have the frame powder coated, do everything and it still costs the same amount as we usually buy our rusty junk cars for. Which, if you know, on this channel, we're all about relatability, and we don't want to cater to just high-priced builds. But everybody can go out and buy a $200 go-kart and put $400 of parts into the whole thing and have an absolute riot. So that's what we're going to do. On top of that, I do have some tech and some stuff to talk about for these motors uh, to show you guys what all is available out there that if you're car guys here on the channel, this might be new to you, and this might open up a whole new hobby for you guys to burn your money on, <laughs> but not nearly as much as it takes to spend on cars. Likewise, the rest of my generation is getting old and beginning to have kids, which means you're going to need some of these in about five years. Might as well start collecting them now. Right, so obviously step one is to see if these motors are any good. So let's go ahead and start looking into them, see if we've got oil, rust in the tanks, uh, make sure everything's mechanically sound, and then we'll move on to see if they have spark. I know why all the short guys do all the YouTubing now for go cars. It's a lot easier for them to get down to this level. Throttle still seems to move just fine on this guy. Likewise with this one. Our gas and choke is all free. Ooh, not so much over here. I can smell the old gas just being around this, so that's gonna be fun. Oop. A little bit of rust on that cap. There's fuel in the tank. I don't know if that's good or not. Probably not. It's, it's, I expected worse, actually. We can clean that out. Oh, similar amounts of rust, but this one looks dry. This one is dry. And there's a stick in it. <laughs> okay, those tanks don't look nearly as bad as I thought, so that's good. That's going to be the big thing out of the way. Let's check our oil level on either of them. I'm sure they're due for a change. One shitty thing about two motors is, you know, you have two motors, which means anything you want to upgrade, you have to 
buy twice <laughs> and do twice. And they're also twice as much work to keep running. Okay, the oil's full and clear. It's pouring on the floor. Awesome. This thing is gonna fit in well at the shop. It's leaking oil all over the floor. Looks pretty good. Put, the, put that on there for burnouts later. How about you? How are you? Also full and clean. Sweet. So far, it looks like it was pretty well maintained. Next up, check our air filters. Make sure there's nothing down in our carburetors that we're gonna suck into the motor. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that absolutely crumbled in my hand, that pre-filter. Let's just go ahead and remove all this because we're going to be taking those carbs off, I can almost guarantee. They're probably going to need rebuilt. Okay, we look good in there. Nothing's going to be sucked down into that if I start winging these over. So let's pop these spark plugs out and uh, check for spark. So like I had mentioned in the intro there, uh, there's a ton, and I mean a ton of performance parts and upgrades and mods you can do to these motors. And there's a ton of motors you can have on these carts. Some of them get pretty serious, like these little 200s right now are making, I think, six, like I said, six and a half horse. Well, they can make a pretty simple 20 horsepower, which is ridiculous. And having two of them back here, we'd have 40 horse. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know down in the comments, and I'll, uh, I'll make some phone calls later today, and we'll see if we can make something happen. Damn, I got long enough threads on these. Good lord. <laughs> what? That can't be the right plug. There's no way. It's huge. <laughs> see if this son of a gun sparks. We're also going to be listening for any weird internal engine noise. I don't see anything. We're a couple flips. Make sure it's all freed up. Oh, there it is. I just didn't have a good enough ground. All right, well, there's one. We're going to spray some oil down those cylinders. Make sure those rings are not scraping on anything. Just standard practice for all this stuff. Should be pretty easy. This plug looks pretty good as well. And yeah, that one wings over a lot easier. You can hear the difference. It's got spark on that as well. So let's get some oil in those cylinders and let it sit for a little bit. Zing. Eat up, little buddy. You especially. I'm sure that won't be flooded at all. Now what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's a little obnoxious. Uh, let's slowly roll this over. So as you can see, I failed. And now there's oil everywhere. It might be the clutch on the back too. That's a little rusty and hanging. Feeling better. I was feeling a lot better. Alright, there's that one. Alright, sweet. Let that sit for a little bit and then flush them out. Alright, that oil's been sitting for a couple minutes. Let's flush these cylinders out. thousand times better. All right, our rings should be nice and oiled now. Let's go ahead, put our plugs back in, and throw a little carb cleaner in the intake just to see what happens. All right, we got our spark plugs back in. Everything's set to run. Before you complain about this, remember, literally the cylinder is full of oil right now. So normal gas probably wouldn't even have a high enough flash point to burn that off and for it to actually run. Stupid straw. <laughs> you need your ass kicked by a tiny straw. Heck off. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna turn the fuel off. See if it makes any noise. Woo! She's smoky. Ooh. 
I don't think that clutch like that. Uh -uh. It ran though. I think it was running off the bowl even. That means we're half done. Let's try this one. Hell? <laughs> it just went full throttle. There we go. The, there's a little spring return right here. I'll show you guys later, but it was stuck and I forgot to wiggle it before we started. See, she third, kids. Are not happy with life. Alright, so we got two motors with good internals, good compression, and good uh, ignition systems. We need to clean those tanks out and get those cards cleaned out, and then we'll have hopefully two good motors. Everything after that, still questionable. We'll see. Alright, we'll wheel these down to the tire shop, see if they got any tubes. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it's gonna do anything. Because you know there's a giant hole, but <laughs> worth a shot, right? Hey. Take the wheels off my go-kart too. <laughs> Alright, so on to removing the carburetor. It is stupid simple on these kind of machines. Especially these Predator, Honda, until it's in motors. You just go boop and boop. And you will have the intake housing removed. Alright. This guy will need unplugged, but our cover is off. At this point. We have a fuel line here and this throttle linkage I was talking about earlier when that other motor won't open to infinity. You're just going to pull this guy forward. We need to remove our fuel line, which can be tricky, especially when they're this old. These motors are probably completely untouched from new. I like to take a needle nose on the front of that tube and push back. Now fuel will come out. So, have a catch pan ready. Alright, a thousand minutes later, our fuel is done draining. We will disconnect this little doodad up yonder. You're going to pull your carburetor out as far as you can. And then turn your throttle all the way this way. Bend that bar a little bit and pull up. Just like that, your carburetor is off. See what I mean? These things are easy as hell to work on. Let's open this up and see if this is something we really even need to tear into. I'm going to go with yes, but sometimes you get lucky. Gross. Not terrible, but uh, you can kind of see as I catch the light there. There is some stuff in there that needs cleaned out, so let's take this over to the bench and clean it out. And then hope and pray that this gasket reseals, which probably won't, but at the same time it probably will because it's a Honda. And their gaskets are seemingly immortal. All right, we got our carburetor off. I'm gonna do as much as I can to avoid inter messing with any of these gaskets. Uh, as you can see, it's not terrible, but we want to do a few things to make sure she's good to go. First thing we're gonna do is pull our float pin, and then pull our float and needle and seat. As you can see, a little bit of stuff on that. Next thing on the list is our main jet. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew that guy. Get him out and make sure he's not clogged up. Come on little buddy, there you go. There is an emulsion tube up in there that sometimes likes to come out. There it goes. You can push it from the center here. It's that little, obviously you can't see it right now, but there's a little brass nipple in the middle just, and they might pop out. And he is dirty, so this would have been a definite problem. This emulsion tube allows the fuel to aerate and the fuel level to change uh, some enrichment and lean condition qualities. We're going to get a little brass brush and clean both of these up and I'm going to get my torch cleaner kit and clean this up because he is completely clogged and this would have never ran. Let's make it happen. Alright, when it comes to cleaning carburetors there's a couple special tools you're going to want to want. Wire brush or a little wire, some, something wire to clean stuff. And most importantly, a torch cleaning kit. Preferably one with these little knurled bits in the middle to act like a file. You're going to use these to poke the appropriate size ordeal through every hole and clean them up. You're going to do this in the main jet, on the carb body, and in the emulsion tube. And any idle jet, basically anything that's supposed to pass air or fuel, even if it looks clean, do this too because that will open them up and help grind out any grind that might be left. 
They might look clean, they might look concentric and nice and round, but sure as God's got sandals, once you do this, you look at it again and you're like, oh, that was actually supposed to be bigger than I thought. So with that, we can see light through both sides of this and everything is looking good on our emulsion tube. I will repeat this process for the idle jet, which we cannot see through at all, and a couple holes on the carburetor will be good. So yeah, get you one of these for small engines and big engines really. They're just the best thing for any carburetor. All right, we got our jets and everything nice and clean. Let's go back to our car body. <laughs> Moog's working on a Nova in the background. There we go. <clears throat> Honda carbs have a filter bowl, which is nice. It catches all of that crap. Look at half that's water. There's no filter, but it's uh, at least acted as a sediment bowl, which is nice. <laughs> and caught all that water. We we'll get that uh, all cleaned out. There's a bunch of crap right here that I need to get out of this guy, and then we'll be ready to go back together. Well, that was a pain in the ass and I had to completely disassemble everything, but we got all this crap out of that fuel shut off. So now we will go ahead and put it all back together. If you want, you can go ahead and clean all this up, but I don't think this is gonna be a permanent carburetor for this engine. I've got some crazy plans going on, so we're just gonna clean this up good enough for now. As long as the interior is clean, she's good to go. She'll run all the same. All right, our carburetor is all reassembled and good to go. We're gonna do the reverse of taking it off and put it right back on. But first, I need to flush that tank, so let's make that happen. All right, our carburetor's rebuilt. Like I said, we gotta flush our tank yet, so I need to remove this. We got one bolt here, two facing down in the front. Those two are nuts. You're just gonna undo those three and lift this right out of here. Easy, easy peasy. Hello, peasy. Now, there's many ways to flush out a tank. Uh, one of my favorites is to get your pressure washer and spray as much of the tank as you can because that high pressure water will bust a lot of shit loose and if the high pressure water doesn't bust it loose gas sloshing around slowly usually isn't going to bust it loose either so you'll just have staining in the gas if you're able to put a filter in line absolutely go ahead but chances are you're probably not able to let's pop both these tanks off and get them cleaned up actually real quick before i flush these out there's one more thing i want to talk about right here there's an o-ring and a filter that unscrews from the base of these tanks if you're still not getting any fuel to move check these filters clean them out replace them whatever you gotta do just letting you know where all the little hidden filters are Alrighty, we are back i've got both of the tanks flushed out while I was away, I stopped down at the tire shop next door, and our buddy Matt was kind enough to stay a few minutes after five and throw some tubes in there. So, Matt, thank you very much for doing that. That's a huge help for us getting this done here on time. Uh, as you can see, our tank's cleaned up really well. That's all it takes. A little bit of pressure washing, and the majority, like 90% of that rust is gone. So, hell yeah. I'm going to get these guys back on, uh, throw some gas in this one. See if this motor runs, if everything's working, and then we'll repeat the process for that carburetor. And these should hopefully both be making noise in yeah, an hour, give or take. Let's get it done. Alrighty, we've got our carburetor reinstalled. All of our throttle springs are reattached, so it's something you definitely want to double check. Anytime you work on anything around the carburetor, before you go to fire stuff up, especially if someone's sitting in it, make sure that all your return springs and everything are properly operating. I haven't started on the other motor yet, but you guys know me. I'm not a very patient person when it comes to this stuff. I gotta make some noise to stay motivated. Let's see what happens. That clutch is not a happy camper. Runs though, until right that happens. Alright, looks like before we're gonna run and drive, we're going to need to rebuild some clutches. So that's fun. Well, maybe, you know, with two half working clutches, we'll be good to go. Who knows? <laughs> Either way, that motor runs for the most part. It does have some fuel issues. I don't know why. Uh, jets and everything were clear, so I'm not sure what that's about. 
but we'll deal with that when we need to. Let's uh, get that other carburetor rebuilt now. Alrighty, carburetor number two is fixed. Let's see if the second engine runs any better than the first one. One thing I have to question is if the reason we don't spin is because of our chain. Yeah. Alright, here we go. It's dead for a second. Our axle's all bent to hell, but it's rotating. So the big question, will they both go? That is a whole new type of violent. That is ridiculous. All right, let's get some gear lube on that chain. go-kart video until Phoenix is here and it's getting to be late. Hey, it's not running by midnight, we gotta sell it. <laughs> no, is it running or wheelies by midnight? Oh yeah, we gotta drive it by midnight, all right. So we're trying to take our clutches apart. Phoenix has located our master link. Just jump. I think we need to get that one off though because it spins freely already. Does so it? I think the set screw may have fallen out, but we'll find out. With the noise is it making, I, that's probably correct. <laughs> it's kind of kind of sounds like a <laughs> if you can imagine that. Yeah, yeah. So All we're right. gonna try to get these clutches off and see what's left inside and see if there's any hope. <laughs> I'm gonna go no, but we're pretty <laughs> yeah, magical. We're gonna try. Yeah, we we pulled some dumb shit off in the past at midnight one one or fourteen years in. We can make a in. golf cart run off Chevy HEI distributors <laughs> and a CBR 600. We can make this go five feet at least. <laughs> <laughs> Despite Phoenix's confidence, we actually were not able to get it to move five feet that night. All right, there we go. Four bolts, one wire. Two Motors beers ready. down. What? I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we got the clutches off and realized that the internals were pretty much completely shot. So instead, we utilized our time by cleaning up the brake disc. We decided even if we can't go forward, we should maybe possibly be able to stop. Alrighty, a couple days have passed. We now have ourselves the cheapest clutches that China can provide. As you can see, these ones stay in one piece. They don't just fall apart like the other ones. A few minutes later, I had everything installed and we are finally ready for our first true test ride. All right, there it is. Clutches are on, chains are on and tight. Everything's looking good and aligned. It's time to take this sucker for its first rip in years. Oh, there he is. I'll call you blister to show up when the work's done. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, you need a driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only man I know crazy enough to sit behind the wheel of this thing. Let's go find a cornfield real quick. <laughs> Well, you think she's ready to move or what? I, I think so. You hop on, I'll fire it up and just turn you loose, some of that. Alright, don't even open the door. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. It's a true Honda. Well, I hope the brakes work. <laughs> the brakes work? No? Nope. nope. <laughs> Looks like they need some adjustment. Holy cow. Dude, this thing is torquey. <laughs> Like, as soon as you touch it, it's like, just wants to whip around. I was not anticipating that with the chain clutches. I figured we would need CVTs, but... I did not expect that whatsoever. I guess each motor's working half a clutch, so... This thing immediately just spins the tires. It's fun. I would say this thing probably would do 25, 30. As it is? As is. It... If just rough guess. It looks like it boogies. I gotta take it for a rip. I gotta, I gotta right, give it a try. Camera. Fires right up though. This is that moral dilemma part where you're like, well, it's, it's never a moral dilemma, it's just a safety dilemma. Like, do I need more power? <laughs> do I really need? I. You can definitely have a lot of fun with what this already has. The size of the sprocket is like a one inch sprocket to a one foot sprocket. The gearing reduction is crazy. And it still acts like it wants more on the bottom end. Like, yeah. It could use a little more torque with those clutches, but that's that's what a CVT would change. <laughs> I don't know how the hell we'd put a CVT on, and I don't know if it really even needs it. Damn. Before we called it for day one of testing, Phoenix still has some determination left over from the golf cart episode, where he really, really wanted to do a wheelie on something. In its stock form, it definitely wasn't going to happen on this go-kart, but Phoenix being Phoenix, he got creative. <laughs> Just kidding, we're not done. Phoenix got a terrible idea. I gotta do a wheelie and something. <laughs> it's been longing for a wheelie. All right, don't die. <laughs> oh God. We're gonna do this right in front of the curb. Does that make sense? Oh no.
as we were concerned, that counted as a wheelie. While the sun set, we loaded the go-kart up to take it out to my cousin's place and rip around on some trails in the woods. Okay, so we're out at my cousin's house. We have figured out a course that we're going to run and time and set a baseline for this so that when we do some mods, if we do some mods, we can figure out what kind of performance we see from said mods. The sun is going down quicker than hell, so we're going to get this thing up and running and run some laps. We're going to be running a dirt track through the woods. We're going to go down, a left, a left, a right, a left, a figure eight, a left, a right, and then back. So we've got some nice technical spots with ruts. We've got a speed run down and back. So we get to test top speed and handling and bottom end torque. It's a really good course. Let's fire this thing up, put it on the line, and see what it does. With that, I pulled the groundhog up to the starting line and got ready to give her hell for our very first lap on the clock. This was the first time we've ever had the go-kart to a point where we could actually crack the throttle all the way open and hold it without giant potholes or the danger of cars while being in town. Immediately I was impressed with how fast this was for a governed stock dual engine go-kart. And having the short wide stance it does, it absolutely ripped through all the turns in the woods. This thing reminded me a lot of the dingo that I raced down at Cars and Cameras every summer. Even with chain clutches, it was surprisingly torquey coming out of the turns. And the wide stance let you hold a lot of speed through the turns. Which is honestly the secret to said Manco dingo I raced down at Cars and Cameras. It has absolutely no suspension, but because I can corner twice as fast as anyone else, we were still able to pull off a third or fourth finish every year. kind of boogies. <laughs> it looked like it. That might have been as fast as one of the aces or faster. I don't know. It, I really thought we were going to have troubles with low end torque and coming out of the hole around corners. It blew the ass end loose. Yeah, what was our time? 51.18. No idea what that means because we've never done this before. I'll, I'm going to run it one more time. All right. And then just for a base comparison, what you can buy off the shelf, we'll run one of the aces on the track and see what that's like. Because that's a manufactured, like, you know, millions of dollars of R&D versus six dudes in a shop with a welder, if I had to guess. Nine point one eight, literally exactly two seconds quicker. Okay, I call that a good time. That's probably all I'm gonna be able to get out of that. Let's uh, let's do it with an ace. I think this is faster. Like I mentioned for comparison, we brought out my 2014 Polaris Ace 325. The sucker's bone stock with a little bit taller tire. These things are awesome off-road, a ton of fun, but very soft in the corners. Let's see how it does. Three. 
As you can tell, those CVT clutches immediately went to work, maximizing torque, output, and efficiency. The Ace shot off the line and right through the bale she came. The 35 mile an hour down the front stretch definitely felt a little quicker than the go-kart, but it can be very hard to judge with no suspension versus full independent suspension. Which as you can see, as soon as I hit the trail, became a huge problem as I was essentially crawling through the woods. In fact, I almost tipped at one point and put her up pretty darn far on two wheels. What do we get? 50-83, the go-kart's faster. That's crazy, cause it, like that speedometer said 30 all the way down there. Every time I've ran the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix, it's been the same result. When the driver skill matches, the lighter dude will always have a better time. So for comparison's sake, we stuck Jesse on to see what'll happen. Three, I'm here, I'm you I'm three two, one, go! He's off. So when he dies, you guys want to like volunteer to be my new brother or something? <laughs> How's this work? Oh, he's booking it. This lap was the first time Jesse had ever been on this cart. And if I had a guess, the first time he's been on a go-kart in a number of years. The ones we had as kids have been thoroughly broken and would need a complete reconstruction. And I don't know who did that, but they should probably fix those. It was me, I broke him. Anyway, Jesse finished his first lap with a 51.81. His second lap was about a half a second faster, but we had some timing issues, so we don't know for sure. What we do know for sure is this go-kart is producing incredibly consistent lap times, so we should be able to very, very easily see any changes the engine or driveline mods make and show you guys where the best bang for your buck is. Yeah, I, I was absolutely blind coming through the corn cobs, or the corn bales. Whatever these are. Hay bales. Corn. There you go. <laughs> Silage, aren't they? Silage bales? Corn Stock bales. Corn Stock You give them to your cows. I don't have, you don't have cows. <laughs> no, we don't. These are someone cows. else's bales who has not picked them up. We had cows on accident. <laughs> well, we did <laughs> On <have> accident. <laughs> the neighbor's cows were out here the there. other, like a week or two ago in the field. That thing has, it just has balls. It, it is so <laughs> tail happy. It Somewhere is, in there. It's torquey. I was like full lock and I'm just like, I hope it comes around and doesn't kill me and throw me into a tree or anything. I don't know. It was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very impressive what those two stock motors do, and especially on chain clutches, which are known to not ever have bottom end torque. They're meant for the top end power. See that tree? Yeah, that one? That one almost killed me. <laughs> Since we had the base times we came for, and the go-kart was still in one running piece, we slapped a helmet on my cousin's kids, strapped them into the go-kart, and sent them off to play. These guys had an absolute blast ripping around in the woods. Where other people may see them just taking a corner, I was watching them grow confidence, each time going faster and faster, pushing the braking point further and further towards the turn, putting that inner tire closer to the edge each time, growing confidence and finding the machine's limits, and then, of course, exceeding it. That tire is no longer on the rim. It is somehow still a circle and driving with no air in it whatsoever. They might not know it, but what they were building out there was the fundamentals of driving. And it was really fun to watch and took me back to my own childhood. So I urge you guys, if you have kids, go out there, find a cheap go-kart, get it running with them, strap them in the seat and turn them loose. Yeah, it's gonna break. Yeah, it's gonna cost money here and there. Yeah, they're probably gonna crash it into something expensive. But what you will be building is a lifetime of confidence behind the wheel. And that is always worth more than $200. So there you have it. That is the revival and story thus far of our BKS Groundhog Duel. I'm learning more and more that this thing is wildly uncommon, especially being a dual engine factory unit. If you have one or you know where there's one sitting, especially if you'd like to sell it, please shoot us an email at junkyarddigs one gmail.com. Or if you know any more information about these, junkyarddigs one at gmail.com. 
Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you want to see us do some simple mods to this, stick around. We want to do a part two. We're not going to do anything crazy, I don't think. I think we'll probably stay uh, stage one, which we'll show you what that means. And just kind of show you guys what you can do to your go-karts as you, your kids get older. And that five horse Briggs or that five horse Honda just isn't doing it anymore. Just like cars, these are pay to play, but not nearly as expensive as cars. You can have a low cost input for some pretty decent sized gains or you can ramp it way up and pull an easy low 20 horsepower out of one of these things. So let me know down in the comments what do you guys want to see with this go-kart and if you know anything about them, head down there and tell me about them because I am genuinely curious what this is and why I've never seen one before. If you guys enjoyed the show and you want to see more content like this before ours comes out, check out all of our friends in the go-kart industry. Cars and Cameras, Redbeard's Garage, Tyrannus Customs, Build Break Repeat. Some awesome dudes there with some awesome channels. We will see you guys right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs, probably in that camper you saw. Peace.